everyone, Angie here, coming on to do a fun little make with you guys. I've got a really cute little fun project with you guys. I'm calling this my multi-pocket pouch. It is a, when it's done, it is six by eight and a half. Great project for a standalone piece, or it can be tucked into a journal, however you choose to use it but it holds a lot of pieces. It's got, the um, reason I'm calling it a multi-pocket pouch is because it's got a large pouch here. Okay, as you can see, hold a lot of pieces here. Multi-pocket here is because it's got, and uh, here we go. I got a few pieces on each side. Multi-pocket, it's got a nice big deep pocket here. It's got a big deep pocket here, and it's got a tuck spot here. And I got a couple pieces tucked in there, okay? Then you flip it over, and it's got the same. It's got a nice deep pocket here, which is where this was. It goes all the way down back to here. It's got another deep pocket here, and I just got a couple um, thin uh, journal cards tucked in there and then another tuck spot here. So it's got one, two pockets and a tuck spot on this side, two pockets and a tuck spot on this side with a really large pouch in the middle. And all I have in here is a really big, um, kind of like a, just a loose, um, kind of like a little notepad just with white paper, just pulled together a few pieces of paper, put a couple staples in the middle, and then I just um, covered it with a digital of a postcard, just for something that I had laying around and tucked that in. So it's just a really cute project. I thought we would make one together. Okay, so let's get that started. And I'll show you how I pulled this baby together. Now for this project, I use one of my um, postal mailers and I will probably regret it because it was my last one. And I like to package everything up and have them ready so when I go to the post office, I can just drop them off. And it was my last one, so let me take my watch off. I don't know why I have that on. Um, and I probably need it. So anyway, um, I cut this down to a 12 by 8 and a half. Okay? And I'm going to cover up this side. And on this one, I covered up the opposite side so you can kind of see the mailing side on the inside um, but we'll cover that we'll reverse it and cover this side so then it'll be blank on that side it doesn't really matter so whatever is your preference if you choose to make this okay you're going to need at least two um, designer series paper of your choice um, but if you want to use more you can do that i have chosen some pretty little um, butterfly papers you're gonna need them to be the same height as your um, paper. And you want something sturdy, some like, like lightweight um, chipboard or heavyweight cardstock paper, something that's gonna be durable, okay? Um, and that's why I chose this. It's a little bit heavier than a heavy cardstock, but it's not as thick and heavy as um, chipboard, okay? So, um, I've chosen, um, before we start gluing and stitching or anything like that, I need to do my thumb pulls, okay? And I just need to do them on the first pocket of my pouch area and the first pocket. I don't need to do it on the last pocket because that's where I did my decorative um, flap for the... <clears throat> Uh, tuck spot. So I just need to do the first two. Okay, so let's see here. I've got my pieces already cut down and I will give you those measurements here in a moment. Let's see. I've got, okay, so for these two, they are going to all be eight and a half. So for these first two here, they're two and a half. So two and a half by eight and a half. And then the next two layers are eight and a half by three and a half. So two and a half 
by eight and a half, three and a half by eight and a half, okay? Those are the two that we're gonna start with. And I need to do my little notches. Now, you can use whatever you want on this element. Just use a, you can use a paper punch, you can use a die cut, you can use anything circular, you can use, you know, piece of a wooden edge from a ribbon, whatever you've got handy. You can just, you know, freehand it, whatever you choose to do. I'm gonna just find my middle, try and be somewhat precise here, but not completely. So I'm just gonna find my middle there. And use my grid lines and just try a little bit. I don't have to be exact exact, but and just do a little line there. Now I'm gonna take the four that I just gave you the measurements of. Now this paper that I chose here, okay, now on the blue pieces, um, they're double-sided. Okay, they have the same pattern, except one side is kind of a light, kind of a blue, and the other side is kind of a darker blue. Now, after I get this cut, I need to make a decision which side I want to use. So I'm just gonna line these up, try and hold them still, so they don't slip and move on me. I'm just gonna do a freehand cut on those, and that's exactly what I did on the first one that I made, the prototype. We all strive for perfection, but we never get there, right? There's no such thing as perfection. Okay, so there we go. And if you happen to See any pencil marks? Just do a quick erase on that. Okay. Now your next step, if you wanna do any inking, probably now would be a good time to do that. I think I am going to, I did inking on this one. But I think I'm gonna, hmm. let me see. I do have some mustard seed. That yellow might look kind of nice. And I have antique linen. And I have pine needle. Mm, I'm going to attempt. And what is going on with this one? There we go. I'm going to attempt not to ink on this project. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, let's start putting our papers down. Now we're going to do opposite ends. So this one will go down first. You're two and a half by eight and a half inch and we're just going to line it up right with the edge. Okay, now I put my paper down first just because it would be easier because um, once I get the first piece down and then I just cut away that piece, okay? I, um, you could hold your paper down and do a little line and cut. Totally up to you, however you prefer. Um, but for me, it's just easier to do it this way because your paper will shift and can move a little bit on you. Okay, so you just want to put glue on the outer edges. Okay, now keep in mind you're gonna have to go around and put some glue on the edge once you get that trimmed away, but that is a very easy thing to do. Okay, no problem. And the eight and a half inch height is about a quarter of an inch too long. And again, I did that purposely. 
I don't know. That's just me. I tend to, people, paper tends to shift, even if it's just the, just the slightest bit. Paper tends to move, okay? And for me, I would rather glue the paper down and then trim away that slightest bit rather than try to have it exact and then it shift and you can't adjust. Okay, so that's just to allow a little bit of room for adjustment. Okay, that's all that is. Okay. So now I will come in and I will trim that. So I, this is just the way I choose to do this, guys. If you want to do it a different way, have at it. Okay, that's just my method. Okay, now I'm just going to lift the paper up and put a small bead of glue right along the edge. Okay, and then, of course, run a little bit of glue since I have this long nozzle up underneath. Just like that. Okay. Now while that's drying, we're going to come back. We're going to do the opposite side the same way. Okay. Lining it up right with the edge. Sealing it down. Okay. Coming in, removing that. that up coming back Bring a little glue into the middle area and down we go now I do plan on stitching this one as well, just like I did the other one, but that is totally an option for you, okay? All right, that's our first layer, okay? Second is your three and a half by eight and a half inch strips, okay? We're gonna reverse them. Now, as you can see, I said this is double-sided paper. Can you see? Hopefully the camera is picking that up for you. You can see how the difference in color, this one versus this one. I need to see which one I want to go with. I think I'm gonna go with the lighter, okay? Hmm. Let me see, let me put it on here. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the lighter one. Okay, so we're gonna put these on next. Okay, so now what I did was I used my mat. Okay, and I came in one inch. Okay, I allowed one inch, so I'm gonna come over one inch distance from the outer edge. Okay, and I glued down the next piece. 
nozzle here. And just make sure your paper doesn't slip on you. Again, I did allow a little bit of hair for, for that reason. You're only going to glue the edges because this is your pocket. You don't want to bring the glue all the way down into the middle on this one, okay? This is your pocket, so just the two edges. Okay. That's one. So I'm going to line it up, use my mat, grid lines. We're going to come in one inch and review, reverse your papers. Do the same thing. Glue them down, only gluing two outer edges. Just don't make as much of a mess as I do. It's about time for me to buy a new mat again already. I'll tell you, I'm bad on mats. I can wear a mat out. I know some people, they like to work on one mat, and then when they um, video for presentation purposes, they bring out a nice new clean mat. I'm not doing all that. I give you everything. The good, the bad, and the ugly, guys. I hope you don't mind. You get to see it all. Okay, so that's our first pocket right there. Okay, now the next one, rather than coming in an inch, I came in an inch and a half. Okay, I made this slot a little bit bigger. Okay, so we come to an inch and a half. And then when we do that, inch and a half, inch and a half on this side. And it should be an inch and a half on that side. Now this piece here is, I didn't give you the measurement on that, one second. This is seven inches by eight and a half, okay? So when you come in to an inch and a half, so from here, from this pocket, come in an inch and a half. Make sure it's an inch and a half there. And it'll be an inch and a half on this side and an inch and a half on this side. So it all balances out and it's nice and even all the way around. Okay. And then we glue that down. Okay. Now. Before we glue that down, though, we need to prepare our flap. Okay. Now on this one, I... Um, now on the flap, this one, I have, I used, um, all I did, the same way I did this little um, cut here, I just, on this one, I used my Spellbinders die. I just didn't feel like bringing out my whole um, machine. So I just used the die and traced it, and I'm just going to do a freehand cut on that. Okay, and I'm just going to cut it. Just taking my time. Trying to get a nice smooth cut all the way around.
Okay. And I just folded a piece of paper in half so I can cut them both out, one for each out on both sides at the same time. So now all I have to do is cut those two pieces, that piece in half, right at the edge. And I'll have two pieces. Just cut off a sliver and we've got two, just like that. Okay, so this will go on one side and this will go on the other. So all we have to do from there is one of two things. We can glue it straight down like that, just butt up right up to the edge, or we can score ourselves the smallest um, edge and give ourselves a little bit of a hinge and fold it underneath and fold it over. So totally up to you. I think I'm gonna do it that. So I'm gonna bring in my scoreboard and I'm just gonna do about, I don't know, about a three eighths of an inch, I guess. Should be plenty enough to tuck that under or behind, should I say. Line that up, three eighths of an inch. That's plenty. Okay. Okay, and again, I gotta decide, do I want it to be the same or do I want to maybe show the darker side on this one? Just for fun, I'm gonna show the darker side. Okay, so let's burnish that score line. Okay, now when we do that, we want to make sure our ends, nothing sticks out on our ends. We might have to trim those back just a little bit, mark those just a smidge. Taper those in, okay? And we are going to just glue those down. And I cut those just a little bit shy a little bit in, a little bit shorter than I did on those ones. These ones, I went all the way to the edge. And on these ones, I just came in just a little bit. Total matter of preference. I just did it, I don't know why. Just to give it a little bit of a different look. Okay. Okay, so before we glue this one down, we are going to put our flaps down. We're just going to butt that right up. And down we go. Okay, so there's one. And I will have to bring my sewing machine in. So it is gonna get loud for a moment and I hope and pray that I don't have any malfunctions. Because um, from time to time, my sewing machine will act up or it could be the user and completely my fault, but sometimes I run into a problem here and there. But we're gonna pray that everything goes smoothly because I'm just gonna do a straight stitch all the way around. And I'm just, I just see a couple little pieces, pencil marks here and there. I'm just erasing those off because I'm not using any ink, so. I uh, don't want those pencil marks to show. Okay. All right, so we've got our flaps on our seven by eight and a half inch piece. So now we're ready to put that down, guys. Okay. So again, we're gonna line this back up so we get our piece glued on nice and straight. If you remember, we're gonna come in from this pocket. We're gonna come in a half, one and a half inches instead of one. So come in one and a half. Line that up. And we're going to glue that down just on the outer, the top and the bottom edges. And really just enough to um, hold.
hold the paper in place because like I said, I am going to be stitching this. Okay, that's one. Right, and two. All right, and there we go, guys. That's it. Those are our paper layers, okay? Now, to hold your, um, your flaps down, which will be your tuck spot, okay? I just kind of glued in the scalloped edges here. I glued here, here, and here and here, and that will create your tuck spot. You can do it however you choose. You can just glue the ends. If you just glue the very ends, it gives you more larger area to tuck stuff in. Totally up to you, okay? And then I created my fold, okay? And we're gonna reinforce that nice and slowly. I'm gonna use the edge of my desk. Okay, just to kind of slowly build that crease up. Okay, we're going to bring the corners together. Bring my bone folder in. papers down into place, crease everything, and there we go. Now if you weren't sewing this, you would just glue it closed on the two outer edge, and I would suggest probably use a really good adhesive, okay? Maybe even a, a hot glue if you wanted to, okay, because you definitely don't want it popping open on you, okay? Now from here, I am going to, before I close it, I am going to, that little extra that I allowed for movement, I'm going to go ahead and cut that away because I want it to be nice and even and flush and clean. Excuse me if I'm out of frame, I'm just bringing it a little closer to myself so I can get it nice and straight. I'm just cutting that away. There we go and then it's going to get closed and sewn and there we go we've got our multi pocket pouch just like that guys okay so let me close up my glue i'm going to bring up my sewing machine really quickly and please excuse the loud noise but i'm going to try and get i'm just going to do a quick stitch actually i'm going to do a stitch around all the way around and then I'm gonna close it and I'm gonna reinforce a stitch on the outer edges. Okay, and I think I have enough. Thread in there. I've got it plugged in. I've got it on my basic straight stitch. Well, 
I think I may. I'm out of I'm out of thread on my bobbin, guys. Hmm, let me see. What I've got in here. I've got another bobbin filled. No, you don't wanna see all that. See? Always something. If I want to bring up my sewing machine, I didn't plan for that. I didn't think about that. I'm so sorry. Well, okay. All right. Well, I guess you don't get to see that part because it's going to take a minute to take care of that. So, what we're going to do is we're going to glue down my tuck spots and I'm going to just do these two first little scallop areas like so the other side And just for now, just so it will close, I'm going to run a little bit of glue, just for video's sake. But I am going to glue it, um, sew it, I'm sorry, off camera. a minute make sure it catches give it another crease and we have got ourselves a multi pocket pouch there we go guys isn't that cute one, two, three, four, four good size pockets. I don't want to open it because I just glued it. There's our pouch, tuck spot and tuck spot. I've got a few pieces here. There's it for your tuck spot. Let's see what else I've got here. Um, got some scrap pieces left over. There's your pocket there and it will hold multiple pieces. There, flip it over, put a tag in there. And how you decorate it is completely, completely up to you. I mean, I think that I cut out, let's see, cut a butterfly just because the butterfly papers, I thought that would look really cute. And I may have to bring in another one for the other side, but I just cut out one. I'm just going to have to do one stitch. I'm not going to be able to stitch around there since I glued that closed like that. But look at that. Isn't that cute? Um, you know, you can put a... And I just grabbed some blue pieces that I thought might look okay. And then you flip it over. Put a couple pieces there. I thought maybe a nice big... That wouldn't work. Nice big journaling card. I haven't, you know, you have to decorate that, of course, but that would look nice. 
with the journaling spot on the back right there and then put something big in the middle and it doesn't have to be the same papers you could do pretty much anything you wanted of course I'm just doing that for sake that that's what I have on hand okay but how you decorate is completely completely up to you but I think that is just a very very cute project you can put a little bit of trim I don't know um, since I'm not going to be able to put stitching up along the top there like I was originally planned since my bobbin wasn't you know I could but then that would interfere with that pocket so no I don't want to do that hmm. anyway just some ideas put some trim I did um, some flat back pearls on this one with a couple word elements. And then the same on this one. I did a, a white flat back pearls on this side and pink on that side. Okay, so completely up to you. Okay, so here's this one and here's that one. Alrighty, so that is my multi pocket pouch, guys. I hope you like the project. I'm going to stop there. Um, I'll try my best to remember to finish this up and I probably won't do a video until today is Friday. Um, probably Sunday will be my next video when I do my Marguerite Miller um, weekly challenge. I will um, do a quick show of this finished. Okay, after I've done stitching and maybe put a few more pieces in the pockets there and do something, throw something in the pouch. Okay, so that is it, guys. I hope you like the project. Give it a try. Just a couple pieces of paper, something sturdy, and go for it. Have at it. Have some fun. Thank you so very much for spending some time with me. I truly appreciate you. Thank you for watching. Take care, and God bless. Bye-bye.